Hello, in this video I will explain a simple method for tuning the parameters of PAD control algorithms. There are many methods for tuning the parameters of PAD controllers. The most prominent one and the first one that comes to my mind is the ziegler nichols method. However, in this video I'm not going to explain uh, this method. Instead, I'm going to introduce a simple and uh, intuitive method for tuning the control parameters. By watching this video, you will develop an intuitive understanding of uh, PAD control and you will learn how the parameters of a PAD controller influence the system performance. The experimental setup consists of a ball of a one meter long beam the position of the ball is measured by a distance sensor, an infrared distance sensor. The control algorithm is implemented using Arduino microcontroller and we use a low pass filter consisting of a resistor and capacitor to filter the measurement data. The goal of the control algorithm is to keep the ball at a prescribed distance from the sensor. In this case, this position is marked by a black tape. In control theory, this position is called the set point. If you perturb the system, the control algorithm should return the ball to its set point. Here you can see the evolution of the control error in time. So if you perturb the ball, the control error oscillates, but after some time it's settled down to zero. Zero corresponds to the set point. Positive values of error, actually this is a negative values of error, are here, and the positive values of error are over, over there. So when the error is negative, the beam rotates counterclockwise. When the error is positive, the beam rotates clockwise. The tuning of a PAD controller consists of finding values of three constants. The first constant corresponds to proportional action. The second constant corresponds to integral action and the third constant corresponds to derivative actions. All of these three constants are multiplying functions of control error. The control error is defined as a difference between the set point value and the actual position. In this case the control error is negative and in this case it's positive. No. The first step in tuning the PAD controller is to find the value of the proportional action or to find the proportional constant. For that purpose we put the ball at the set point. In this case the error is close to zero. To properly tune the PAD control algorithm besides tracking the control error we also need to track the control signal. That is, that's the signal that's computed by a PAD controller and sent to the actuator, which is in our case a servo motor. On the screen, the control action is represented by a red line and the control error is represented by a blue line. The first step in tuning the PAD controller is to find the value of the proportional constant. For that purpose, we're going to set 
the value of the proportional constant to be equal to a very small number. In our case, it's 0 0.1. The proportional action computes the control actions by simply multiplying the proportional gain with the control error. And let us see the action of a proportional controller. So we perturb the ball a little bit and we can see that the ball oscillates. Two important phenomena can be observed. The first phenomena is that the proportional controller cannot eliminate the steady state error. In this case, we can see that the error is around, let's say, 14. And control action is very low. However, the system doesn't move. The ball doesn't move because the computed control actions or the rotation angles for the servo motor are too small. So this error multiplied by 0 0.1 control gain corresponds to, as we can see here, maybe one degree of rotation. One degree of rotation is not enough to move the ball right. So the ball will stay infinitely long and we will have a steady state control error which you can see over here. Another important phenomenon is that there is an initial perturbation such that the oscillations are becoming unstable. In this case, for this perturbation, we can see that oscillations are stable. However, if we perturb the system or the ball a bit more, we will notice that the oscillations will either be bounded or they will increase in magnitude. They will slowly increase in magnitude, as you can see over here. And eventually, since this is an open loop unstable system, the closed loop system will be unstable. Notice that we have a barrier over here that prevents the system from exploding, and this will happen eventually. We can improve the system stability by increasing the derivative action. We increase the derivative action from 0 to 0 0.1. And let's see what happens. We perturb the ball. Notice that in the previous case, the system became unstable when the initial perturbation was over here. Let's see what happens when we have a derivative control together with a proportional control. we can see that the oscillations or the amplitudes of oscillations are slowly decaying and eventually the ball will settle around the set point. Let's see what happens when we further increase the value of the derivative constant. Now the derivative constant is 0 0.3. For the same initial perturbation, we can see that only 
in a single oscillation the ball returns close to the set point. Let's repeat the experiment. Miracle! So the derivative action stabilizes the system or dampens the oscillations. However, the derivative action has negative effect. If we further increase the value of the derivative action, we can observe this phenomena. The system starts to shake. And you can see it over here, what happens. So in this case, the derivative action was equal to 0 0.5. And obviously, the system starts to shake. This shaking phenomenon is influenced by measurement errors or the measurement noise coming from the infrared sensor. In our case we are using a low-cost infrared sensor and consequently the measurements are quite noisy despite the fact that they are filtered, these measurements are filtered by a low-pass filter. Since the distance measurements are noisy, the position error will also be noisy. On the other hand, the derivative controller computes the control action as a first derivative of the position error and it multiplies the result with a, with a derivative constant. Due to these uh, oscillations in the error, in the position error, the first derivative will have a large oscillatory value which will create create high value, high oscillatory value of the control action that you can see over here. And these actions are actually multiplied by the derivative constant. So we don't want derivative constant to have a large value when the measurements are corrupted by a significant amount of measurement noise. The final tuning step is to set the value of the integral action. Integral action represented by the constant ti was initially equal to zero, which corresponded to a large value of the ti constant. Now, we decrease the value of uh, ti constant to 5. The main purpose of the integral action is to eliminate the steady state error. At the same time, the integral action will increase the system overshoot. However, by increasing the derivative action, furthermore, we can decrease the system overshoot. This is what happens when the TI constant has a small value or the integral action has a large value. The system becomes unstable. The procedure for choosing the parameters of a PAD controller can be summarized as follows. First, we adjust the proportional action. We adjust the proportional action by increasing the proportional constant. We increase the proportional constant until we notice steady oscillations or marginally sta stable oscillations. Two, increase the system damping or to attenuate these oscillations we choose the derivative action. We generally increase the derivative action until we obtain a sufficiently damped system response. However, we should always keep in mind that a large value of derivative constant has a negative effect on the system performance since the measurement noise can be amplified. And finally, we set the integral action by decreasing the TI or the integral constant such that the steady state error is eliminated. However, 
you should be careful and always keep in mind that a low value of the integral constant can cause system to be unstable and generally speaking lower values of the ti constant increase the system overshoot